Um, I'm going to examine uh, mandible. Um, so, again, this is for, for the benefit of junior doctors, senior house officers, um, and uh, um, A&E staff. So, a patient presenting with a, a broken jaw, of course, you, you're going to go through uh, your, your entire um, uh, examination uh, and of your trauma series. But if, typically, you'll get a young patient who's been out on a Friday night um, and they come in with a broken jaw. Uh, they'll be swelling, it'll be painful, they'll often have associated numbness in the distribution of the uh, mental nerve, which is uh, uh, the terminal branch of the inferior alveolar nerve. So, any numbness there compared to the other side? No. Okay. The key feature, which, and we'll get the camera in on that, is the occlusion. So, what you'll have, you want to pull the cheeks out, get the patient to bite together. Do your teeth feel like they're meeting normally? And the patients will say no. But often you see a step in the teeth position. That step causes a premature bite on one or the other side. If you get anybody who's got an altered bite, it's likely that they've got a fracture. There's three tests that I can do to determine whether or not there's a subtle fracture that hasn't caused displacement. And those three tests are to push against my finger, open your mouth. Is that painful? If there's a fracture at the condom, that'll be painful. The next test is to push laterally any pain there, you're distracting a midline fracture. So symphyseal, parasymphyseal fractures will be distracted with pressure over the side. If there's swelling and bruising there, you won't be able to do that. The final test for me, big wide mouth, is to push on the lingual side and out. Again, it will distract a midline fracture, causing pain. So you then can diagnose where the fracture is, whether it's condyle, ramus, body, parasymphysis, symphysis. Open for me as wide as you can. They'll have a sublingual hematoma, pathognomonic for fractures of the mandible because you get bleeding into that floral mouth space. Final thing to do is just to have a feel of the outline from behind. We always examine patients from a maxilla facial point of view from both behind and in front and you want to palpate uh, and see if there's any localised pain. Anything I've missed, chaps? No, I think key things are sublingual hematoma, malocclusion is very sensitive and altered sensation on the lower lip. Perfect, thank you.